welcome back to my floss tube. This is episode number four and I am Rosie X Stitches here on floss tube and over on Instagram as well. First of all, I really want to apologize for the amount of time that I have been missing in action. It has been a busy few months, but I'm hoping that I'll now be able to get back into a bit more of a routine. There isn't any rhyme or reason for it. It just seems to be different things that have got in the way or come up that have meant that I haven't therefore done a floss tube. I was going to do one over the Easter holidays, but these Easter holidays came and went and then we're back in term time and term time is just so manic, especially at the moment um, as year six, we're now starting to get ourselves ready for the SATS week that is due to come around in the next couple of weeks. So yes, very busy, both job and personal life, but I'm here. I've got a bit of stitching to show you, not a huge amount. I would have thought I'd have done a bit more than what I have done, but um, yeah, I'll just show you what I've got and we'll go from there. I'm, I couldn't remember exactly what I have shown you in the previous one or how far I got or whether the pieces you've seen before, but all the information I will put below anyway, or if I remember, say it as I go. So the first piece that, um, I'm going to show you today is the current um, salve from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Now parts one, two, three and part four have been released. I have done parts one, two, three and I'm now just starting part four. Um, and part four are these two parts here where we're just going over into Ireland. So that is where I'm up to so far. There are a few other pieces. There's a horseshoe, there's a rainbow to go in um, and a hat um, to finish off this part. Um, and there's also a few, there's a crab and a seal and a couple of islands to add in beneath. This is done using their kits. They provide all of the resources that you need. So this is done on a 16 count icy blue Ada and it matches the world um, adventures one that they've got as well and all of the DMCs and this is done two over one for cross. I did get the cute red bus needle minder as well to go with it which I'm sure lots of you have seen already but yes really enjoying that and I'm really pleased I'm managing to keep up the parts aren't too big which does allow you to keep up and go with it rather than getting snowed under which is great. There we go, that's that one. Whip number one. My second whip that I am going to show you is one that I started quite some time ago. It is the Cinderella Lace Silhouette. So this is the very first full coverage that I started. And this is by Nenny Designs. I got this one off of Etsy a little while ago. Sorry. And this one is done on a 16 count antique white Zweigart Ada. So it being my first full coverage, I wasn't sure whether I was willing to have a go at doing even weave or linen a full, and a full coverage. So I went with an Ada, which I'm more comfortable with. I am sorry that it is a little bit scrunched up and a little bit unironed, but I only ironed right at the end. Now, I'm a bit chuffed with this. Um, this is a full page complete for the 310. There is a lot of 310 in this piece. But this is all of the very first page. 310 is complete. So now I can either, I'm a bit undecided whether or not to carry on with all of the 310 and do the other pages of 310 and then come back and add the colour. Because it is quite nice having that monochrome, not having to worry about different colours and just going with it. Um, or whether I go back and fill in all the colour and have a full page completion on this before I move on. So I'm a little bit undecided on that. But I'm actually really enjoying stitching it, especially with the bulk black at this point. It may completely change when I have to start introducing and doing more confetti heavy stitching when I introduce the other colours later on. I'm not overly pleased with the coverage of this um, because you might be able to see that actually it is a little bit patchy. Um, however, having already started with DMC, 
I feel I have to continue with it. Um, I do now know, however, that Anchor Black does do a better coverage or um, the CXC Black does a better coverage as well. But having Cyber DMC, I sort of feel like I have to continue. So that's that one. Slowly getting there. I don't have um, percentages of the stitching on here. However, um, over on my Instagram, is I post regularly and it has got all of the number of stitches that I've done and the percentages that I've completed. So if you're interested or want to see, then check out my Instagram page because all the other additional information is all over there. My next whip is um, a Stitch Rovia pattern. It is one of the recipe patterns. I have, did have a picture of it. Hang on, let's have a look. There it is. And it is the Victoria sponge pattern. So I'm going to come in a little bit closer because it is only a little picture. It is a Victoria sponge by Citrovia Emma Congdon. Now, I have, I don't know if I've made a little bit of a mistake with this, but I'm in too deep now. So I'm just going to carry on. So I managed to... Well, I didn't manage to. I bought a piece of um, material to do this on. Thinking, oh, that'll be a lovely colour. However, I think I bought the rise, wrong size count for it. So I couldn't decide whether or not to do it two over one, but then I thought it would, no, two over two, but then I thought it'd be massive. Um, so I did it one over one full cross. And this is on a... 25 count even weave Lugana in ivory. It is going to be absolutely tiny. Um, and it is a bit eye straining to do. But it does look neat. Those neat stitches. Because they are so tiny. Um, and it's meant that I can get two of them done on because so I've got other recipes as well. I've got the pancake one as well, which I want to do after. It does mean that I can use this same piece of fabric to do um, both of them because the, the fabric is big enough. Well big enough. And it will give me a good margin around the outside to be able to finish it. So nice big piece. If I'd done it to... Um, two over two I would have only been able to do it would have been big and it would have needed the whole piece um but having it only small means that I can get both pieces on which I guess is a win-win there we go that's my start there yeah and I do like her patterns they're quite easy to read I couldn't manage to get it into pattern keeper it was a pdf that I downloaded from Etsy from their Etsy shop but I couldn't work out how to get it into Pattern Keeper because it was jumping around a lot and it wouldn't merge so I need to have a little bit of a play with that I don't know if um, anyone's had her patterns before and managed to get them onto Pattern Keeper or it is a problem that actually it is quite difficult to get them on there or they're not pat um, Pattern Keeper compatible but or it could just be operator error and me not working out how to do it properly so that's that one Next one is, I'm sure lots of people are familiar with this. Um, this is the Spring Quaker by Leela Studios. Sorry about the glare there, let me just do it like that. There you go, you see it. And this one was uh, a huge enabling by Hugo Stitcher. Um, and yeah, she has done I think now she's pretty much done the whole of the outside and she's just coming into the middle part here. Um, but her her piece, watching her stitch it back, it looked absolutely brilliant. And she was so positive and about how much she enjoyed doing this. Um, and it is gorgeous, so I thought I would give it a go. So this is how far I've got. This one is done on a 40 count vintage Newcastle linen in cafe Olay. And this is where we again, sorry, I haven't ironed it 
because I'll iron it at the end. But this is as far as I have got. So I've got the ABC and then I've started on this first motif underneath. It is done, this one is done in um, Classic Colour Works and this is a roasted, roasted chestnut uh, Classic Colour Works. I'm really pleased with how it's starting to look and how it's starting to come together. The 40 count is a bit ambitious, but I do think it is gorgeous and I love this colour, the Cafe au lait. And I think it's, it's going to be quite a big piece even on the 40 count because this is the size of the fabric for it. So it is going to be quite a big, sizable piece when it's finished. I am, this isn't the called for um, fabric colour. I couldn't get the called for fabric colour in the UK, but I think it works on this colour. So yeah, really enjoying stitching on that one. Uh, I have also got the Summer Quaker to start. Sorry, I'll try and do it again. Once I finish the spring one. And I love the central picture in this one. So I'm really looking forward to it when I've done the spring one. So that are those two from Leela's Studios. I have also got the ha Halloween one, which I know is really popular, and also the um, Holiday Quaker as well. Right, the next one that I am doing is a little bit different. It's not a cross stitch, it is a black work. So I said um, at the beginning of the year that I wanted to do, try lots of new diff different things. Um, and so I went for a peppermint purple black work pattern. Now this is the green sea turtle. And I picked this one because I have got a tortoise myself. I know this isn't a tortoise, but similar-ish. Um, and I wanted to stick this, ditch this one because of the love of tortoises. So this is as far as I've got. I have made a little bit of a mistake on this one, which I have written myself a little note on the pattern to remind me when I come back to stitch this one again, that I have made a bit of a muck up. Don't want to frog it because unpicking black work is, is going to take me absolutely forever. Um, but yeah, I will just work it. I will fudge it so that it does come together and work. So this is the start that I've made. I really enjoy doing this. It's, once you get the pattern and the sequence that you're doing, um, it's very repetitive and you can get, I think that's why I went wrong is I did one too many along because I was just so in the groove of doing this repetitive pattern. And then uh, forgot about myself. So that is that one. This is done on a, oh gosh, what is this? I think this is a 16 count, just a 16 count white, or is it an 18 count? 18 count in white, I think, if that's not right, I will write it down underneath. But yeah, really pleased with that one. I'm using um, DMCs, the call for DMCs for it. Um, it was mentioned that sometimes DMC isn't the best one to use and that actually sulkies can be better because of the crisp finish that they provide. But this DMC seems to be working all right and it's given a nice, my first attempt. It's, um, yeah, it's working up nicely. So I'm pleased with that. So that is my Blackwork Sea Turtle. I can't believe I don't actually know. I didn't write down what that one was. So all the other ones I've been quite organised and actually written down what they are but clearly not with that one that one obviously fell through the net so I do apologize next one is another sale that I've been doing and this is the um happy santa cell I have mentioned this one before and this is using one of Stitcherovia's patterns um on her Etsy she calls it I think busy santa but in the um stitcher in the cross stitcher magazine that i got this one from um they call it peak santa um this was from the november 2021 edition of the cross stitcher um so if you've got that magazine why not join in 
Um, I know it's early, but there are 12 Santas, 12 Santas in total. So we're doing one every month. Um, lots of people are doing it in this cushion style, but I'm not completely confident we're doing cushion finishes at the moment and pillow finishes. That is something that I'm building up to. So I decided to do them as little ornaments. So do each individual one as a little ornament. So the ones that I've done so far are, and I finish, I fully finished these ones. So I've done this one. Him holding the tree. Oops, see. So that was my first one in January. Then I did this one in February. Then this one was March's one. This one isn't fully finished. This one is um, still on the parchment. So I did, a, I did it on a blue parchment. So that one was March's. Yes, it is the um, 30th of April today. 30th? Yeah. Um, and I haven't started it. I am going to start it hopefully today. So at least I have then started it in the right month. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this Santa down here on the um, scooter and then I will have done these ones all down this side those four there and then I'm going to come back up to the top and then this is going to be the one that I'm going to do in May and then I'll work down again all the way and this will be my last one in December so yeah really in um, enjoying that one Um, I put all the details, so if you did want to join the sale, I'll put all of the details down below um, so that you can uh, join in with that. It'd be great to, you know, see more people stitching Happy Santas because they do make you smile as you are stitching them, just because they are just very jolly, jolly men. Um, so that is that. That is the two sales that I'm currently a part of. Um, as I said, I was doing it on parchment, so... I'm using this blue, I got this off of um, Amazon, it's just a blue parchment paper, a um, bit like the Mill Hill style parchment papers, and all of the cord for DMCs, which I have in my stash anyway. So yeah, that's what I've decided to do it on, and then I'm just backing them, I've got pieces of grey, grey felt, um, which I'm then going to use just to back them. I have um, since... Um, Starting these, I have spoken to um, Zarina at Hawkins Hobbies. Um, she was at one of the retreats that I went to recently and um, she gave me some better advice on how to fully finish these style of ornaments because uh, I've got quite a few mill hills and I bought some from her, which I'll, I'll talk to you about anyway when I come on to the next part. Um, but I'm going to have to carry on finishing them in the way that I was finishing them with glue. And then I'm going to use Zarina's strategy um, for my actual Mill Hill ornaments that I've bought um, to finish them properly so that they get a nicer finish because hers are her finishes are beautiful on her Mill Hills. So that is that. Um, the next one that I worked on is this. Now, these are two separate patterns. So I've got the Happy Sloth Disney Princesses. And I've also got the Happy Sloth you guessed it, the villains as well to go with them. Now they are not just individual patterns, so I did buy the two, um, but, and I've seen lots of people stitching them um, up, um, including Stitched by Liz. Um, if you haven't seen her, she's, she's doing some fantastic projects at the moment. It's really um, fantastic to watch. And um, her, her partner does the editing for her and leaves little messages as well so it's lovely to see them both doing it um and she's nearly at 2000 subscribers and if she reaches 2000 subscribers then uh, her partner ross said that he will or oh, liz is twisting his arm and saying that she's got to teach him how to stitch so it'll be great to see him stitching something as well um but she's started doing these as well she's been doing the villains um and she's got the villains and she's started on snow white on here as well um so she sort of gave me the kickstart in which she said, oh, I've got that pattern in my stash, so I'm going to start that one as well. So this is the start that I've made. I have decided to stitch the um, 
princess alongside their villain. So I have got them all here. So obviously there's Ariel, there's Aurora, Maleficent. Oh gosh, what was her name? I did this the other day. Ursula, there we go. Um, so we've got them buddied up with their villain next to it. So I have just done the outline for these and then I'm going to go back and colour them in with their block colour because it is quite an easy colouring in almost activity afterwards. Um, so that will be nice. They are bigger. They are stitching up far bigger than I thought they were going to. Um, but yeah, they're lovely, really pretty. And who doesn't like a Disney princess and a villain? So this is on, what have I stitched this on? Have I done this again where I haven't actually? No, I'm organised this time. This is a 16 count antique white by Zweigart. And I'm using all the called for DMCs. So this is 310 that these are done in. So there we go. That is those. The next one, sorry, I do feel like I'm rattling through this, but I do seem to have a lot to fit in and I don't want this video to last ages. Um, as I know there are so many videos that often come out around this time of the, of the month as people are updating everybody on what they've been up to. So I thought I would try and make it as swift as possible. So this is the next one, sorry, there's a bit of glare there. And um, the next one that I've been working on, which is a Gecko Rouge kit. And this is Lorna Lane's B. Another full coverage one that I've decided to start, but a bit different to the Cinderella um, Silhouette Lace one. Okay, and this is as far as I have got. A little bit of progress on where I was previously. So this is where we are. So I've started on the B. So we've got the main bit of black for the B here in the middle and then the wings are starting to come up and we're starting to see some of the yellow coming in too. This is a lovely stitch as well. Um, and I'm using all of the kit that I got. This is an 18 count Ada that came with it. And I'm doing it two over one full cross. So yeah, really enjoying that one as well. Hopefully, I don't know how long it will take me to get to this, but um, hopefully not horrendous. Be long. But there we go is where we are okay that is that one the gecko rouges are nice because they come with all kitted up all the materials all, all the fabric all the floss is all there however the only thing that i am finding quite challenging is actually the, there is so much floss I'll show you so this is sort of how it comes on the cards there is so much floss that it isn't particularly easy and I just haven't got the inclination to take it all off and put it on individual cards. So it is getting a little bit on the tangled side, as you can see. Um, yeah, Not the neatest that it could be. Almost needs a bit of a brush, but I don't, I don't have the time or the desire to take them all off and put them on my own bobbins or whatnot. So I'm just gonna have to put up with it, I think, and hope for the best. Um, but it's good that it all comes, or everything that you need already in the kit, which is great. So that's that one. Right then, next one. Now, this one is one that I am working on. It is the Amy Stewart. Put a picture up for you. The Amy Stewart amazing animal kingdom shelves oh it's in the style of the shelves the mini the amazing animal kingdom i did go for the mini because it was my first hade that i decided that i wanted to attempt um yeah so it is the mini one artwork by amy stewart and then charted by heaven and earth designs i have shown you this one before i haven't made any progress on this one and the reason is I'm finding doing it 
um, cross country a little bit stressful. So, at the retreat that I went to, I went to the Ladybird retreat in Crewe in well this month, earlier this month, and um, I saw I met my friend um, Tan, and she does beautiful full coverages. Um, she's currently she's a monogamous stitcher, and she's currently working on a beautiful Harry Potter piece. Um, and she used to do sort of cross country, and then when we got to the retreat she was showing me uh, that she started doing Royal Rose and she started introducing me into this idea of doing that. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give that a go. Um, so I've watched a few tutorials on it. I joined the Royal Rose um, Facebook group um, to get all the tips and tricks. Um, so I'm gonna give it a go. I have obviously started this, so I am gonna have to try and fill in the ones that I've done and then start with the Royal Rose. So I then bought myself Tan's recommendation, some of these bobbies um, to enable to hold any parked threads that I'm using, sorry Russell, um, and any threads I've parked to keep them out of the way because that was one of my concerns that I, I would get in a complete tangle. So I've got those, I haven't really got an excuse now not to give it a go but I'm just a little bit nervous about having an attempt but we'll see how it goes and next time I will have done some and I will update you on how it went. So that is as far as I have got. Ooh. Nervous, 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 nervous. Right then, next, they are all the whips that I've made any progress on. Um, I have got a couple of finishes, which I wish to show you. So the first finish was this one which I finished on the 23rd of April um, the day in which Yasmin's Made With Love ran the London Marathon and here it is so this is one of Yasmin's Made With Love's pieces that she um, designed and released to raise money for um, her running the London Marathon for the charity Men Cap. And this is diversity is embracing the uniqueness of others and the pattern itself is called uniqueness of others. But I just thought that this one was absolutely beautiful with the different blues. So that is why I decided on this one. She's got a number of other love beautiful patterns but this one just called out to me. Sorry, let's spread it there. Um, and this one is stitched on a 16 count granite from um, from Lakeside Needlecraft. Um, it's also the one that I'm doing my um, dinosaur ABC on. And this was a spare piece from that. So I used it from my stash. It's all the called for DMCs that Yaz um, designed it with and it was just really I did all the outline first and then I went back and coloured it in and then did the back stitch so yeah really pleased with that and my plan is this is my first attempt going to be my first attempt at a cushion so I've got I know for a cushion you don't need a huge amount of space or margin um, but I'm going, I've given myself plenty in which to do it in. Probably could have saved myself some, but I do want there to be a bit of a border on the cushion. So I do almost want it to be sort of that sort of border size around the edge of my cushion, just so that I can see some of the, the fabric as well. So there is going to be sort of a, a couple of inch border for my cushion and then obviously the, the hemming side of things. So that's that. And I bought some fabric. So I went with my mum to a craft fair. Cra um, can't remember what it was called. I'll put it at the bottom. Um, in Exeter. And I found this beautiful peacock fabric. Um, which I'm hoping... 
It's not completely the right colours, but there is some similarities in the blues and the greens. So I'm going to use this fabric as the backing fabric for my cushion. So the fabric on the back of my cushion. Um, yeah. So we'll see how that looks. Give it a go. My first ever attempt at making a cushion. Hopefully it'll go well. So that is the fabric that I've got. I think it is actually called Peacock. Peacock Flourish by Anne Laura of Grizzly Gulch Gallery. So yeah, that will go on there in a nice cushion. So that is that one. Finish number one. Finish number two is a Mill Hill. So I've shown in my um, videos before that I have got this collection of garden gnomes ornaments from Mill Hill. And this is the fir my first ever attempt at beading and I absolutely loved it. Really enjoyed that the beading on this one. I know it's only a small ornament, so maybe if I was doing it for hours and hours and hours, I may not have the same opinion, but really enjoyed the beading on here. So I'm looking forward to doing my next one and the beading again on that. And as I said, um, from speaking to Zarina on um, the retreating crew, um, she gave me some tips on how to finish these properly. Um, so I'm going to get the resources I need to finish that, um, to finish them properly. And more neatly as hers was stunning. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to wait until I've done them all and then I will finish them all together so they're all the same. But that is my first one of this collection. And the next one that I'm going to start goes with this, sorry, goes with this house. And it is the wheelbarrow name. But I don't know if it goes with this house. I'm just saying I want it to go with this house. So it's going to be the wheelbarrow name. And they will both go together and wait until I've done the other remaining four to then finish them all the same. So that is that one. My next finish is Hello May. My hands on designs. Now this one is fresh off of my Q snap. I finished it yesterday. My plan is to do all 12 of them. And here are all 12. So I started in May as May is the next um May is the next month that we're about to go into tomorrow and then I'm going to carry on from there. Now I owe a big big thank you to Chloe Penguin Cross Stitch for these because she very very kindly um, gifted me these. I saw her um, hello month um, post that she's posted on her Instagram um, and commented on them um, and she very kindly gifted this to me. Uh, along with another of other lovely things. So thank you very much, Chloe. I'm really enjoying stitching these up. And they're really lovely, really quick stitch stitch ups, to be honest. This one, I think this one took me, if I'd done it properly, probably it would have taken me a day. Um, but I did have a few breaks and stop starts, so it did take me two days. Um, it does suggest to do it on a 16 count fabric. This is on a 14 count fabric. This is on confetti. 14 count, I think it's a fabric flare, which I also bought from Lakeside Needlecraft. They're not all going to be on um, this sort of like confetti um, material. Um, I think it lends itself to some of the months. So I've gone through and decided which months are sort of bright and colourful and therefore would suit this confetti style of fabric. 
Um, and then I've also gone through and decided which ones would be better on a just a plain 14 count white fabric. So there are some that would are a bit more um, jazzy in their colours with the buttons that they've got and the DMC colours that they've chosen. They will go on these. So the months that I've decided will go on here are May, July, August, September, February and December. And the ones that will go on the white will be January, March, April, June, October and November. So you can see some of them are a little bit more colourful, which therefore would lend themselves more to this confetti style. And some of them are a little bit darker or blues, for example, which I thought would be better off on the plain white. So again, a massive, massive thank you, Chloe, for sending that over. It really is um, very kind of you. And I will re-gift it again um, to keep sharing that love for these. So thank you very much. Um, so that is my finishes. I haven't got a huge amount. Those were my finishes. And I've got a couple of other little bits um, to share with you that I started, which I suppose probably could be in the whip section as well, but that I started on um, my retreat that I went to when I went up to crew. I'm just going to, sorry, should that because I seem to have just started massive piles going on over here so the first one that I want to share with you is this one which is I haven't got a picture of this I need to get it off up on my um tablet so this is I'm sure lots of you have seen it that or heard about it that um Teresa Little Stitcher has the fancy ladies style going on or Theresa made me do it style where everyone's stitching fancy ladies and then Mags um who I was very lucky to meet at the crew retreat um asked whether fancy ducks would be an option so I decided to start a fancy duck and I've decided to go for the little prince which is artwork artwork by Gordon Fitchett and again it is charted by heaven and earth designs let me zoom in a little bit again so you can see him there he is so this is my first fancy anything that i've started i haven't done any fancy ladies before so this is my first one sorry okay um and while i was at the retreat um, the lovely ladies from Patchwork Rabbit were there and they helped me out with the fabric that I was going to use. So I've decided to go for a 30 count Parisian grey because with the duck being having a white face, it is um, it would have been difficult to do it on a white fabric. And also the fact that it is the duck outline. Um, so it's, it is full coverage within the duck but the um, background of the duck is not stitched. So therefore, I couldn't use a gridded fabric like I have got for um, my Amy Stewart. So this one wouldn't have worked because you would have seen the background. So therefore, I had to go for a non-gridded fabric that wasn't white. So the ladies were fabulous. They helped me um, size up what I needed. And this is what I've done. A very, very small start here. I'm going to use all the call for DMCs. And this is, as I said, 30 count. And I'm doing it two over one. Ten stitch. And while we were at the um, retreat, Mags um, had on the finish table um, one of her fancy ducks that she had finished. And it just looked fantastic. So I'm excited to see the end result for this one. It is going to take me some time as I've got 101 other whips also on the go. But it is something I look forward to stitching when it comes round to it. So yeah, not much to it, but it's a start. It's something and it means that I'm part of the fancy duck clan. The, the Theresa made me do it, Sal, which is nice. And I'm lucky, well, well, again, while I was away at the retreat, I bought a number of project bags. So this is one of the project bags, bags um, and it's um, um, made by Ladybird. 
So Jo, who organised the retreat, she makes project bags. So this is one of the ones that I purchased with the flamingos on it. And so my duck project lives within that project bag. The next one that I started while I was at the retreat is an autumn lane strip stitchery, which love grows here pattern. This is one that I did buy from um, Patchwork Rabbit. And I'm stitching it on. It's a 32 count even weave. Um, and it is the, Mar it's a Murano even weave powder pink splash. And this is what I've done so far. And the lovely Susie, um, who I will tag beneath from, uh, who's on Instagram, was there. And um, so was Susie. She was a massive enabler with this one. She walked past me a few times and I hadn't put any stitches in. She said, right, you need to start a new project. So she encouraged me to start this one and she helped me source all the floss that I needed. Um, and she was absolutely great. I learned a lot from her over the weekend. Um, so yeah, that's as far as I've got on there. This was an absolute nightmare to stitch because I only had the red while I was at the retreat and I started this at the retreat and I only had the red. So I had to do a lot of counting between these different motifs and the number of times I miscounted it. And my the lovely lady who sat next to me, Leanne, she um, offered to count it for me as well. And her eyes were going funny, my eyes were going funny and it was just, yeah. Counting is not my forte sometimes. And it turns out that I miscounted on the actual uh, pattern instead of actually on the fabric. Whoops. But it looks good. I like the colours. The fabric's perfect for it. And uh, yeah, lovely. Really nice. So that was that one. Right. The next thing that I got while I was at the retreat was, as I've mentioned, um, Zarina from Hawkins Hobbies was there. And um, I spoke to her. I said that I'd never done a fancy lady before, but I was really interested in having a go at one. And she was talking me through about um, the different ones that she did. Obviously, she has the Mirabilia, she has the Bella Filipina, she has the Nora Corbett's there. Um, and I went in with the perception that Bella Filipinas were smaller ones. Completely wrong. So thank goodness I spoke to her. And she said that for a first one, if you're not, you know, if you're not confident with them to actually have a go at doing a Nora Corbett first and she walked over to her box of Nora Corbett she pulled one out and this was the one that she pulled out Miss Honeybee now I absolutely love bees um and so the fact that this was the one she just randomly went over to the box and pulled it out just was fate to me that this is the one that I needed to have a go at so I got Miss Honeybee and I got it as a full kit. So I had all of the fabric, the MCs, Krynix, beads, treasures, everything came with it. And then when I mentioned to Serena that I loved bees, she also had in, not in a, a full kit, but just as the pattern, she had Miss Queen Bee. So I got Miss Honey Bee and Miss Queen Bee as a pair, which I will stitch and display together. I haven't started them yet though. So yeah, really looking forward to that. And they have got their own special bag as well, which is um which is also made by Joe, which is this Queen Bee project bag. So yeah, lovely. Right, a few more things that I just want to share. Um and that is from the Nashville new market releases. I was lucky enough to get my hands on these hands-on designs patterns, the Polar Plunge. So um, Pixie Needle Works um, attended Nashville and I put in a pre-order for these different patterns. So I got the Wally the Woolworths, I got Whale Hello There, and I got Polar Bear Peak. And I also asked, um, 
whether or not it would be possible for them to get the finishing boards as well. So while they were over at Nashville, they also grabbed me um, a set of the finishing boards, which I'm really, really thankful for. So I've got those to finish them on. I've also um, put a pre-order in for the two new patterns within that um, collection. So there's going to be six in total. They're the first three. The next two are just being uh, a pre-order. Um, and they're going to be released soon. And there's going to be one final one that um, Hands On Design is going to release as a download on their website. So I've got the finishing boards for them to go on. I've got a blue linen all ready for me to stitch that on. There are, this one did have one of the new um, classic colour works um, threads that it called for, Field of Greens, which I've managed to just get my hands on now um, because it was quite difficult to find um, as being a new release. But I've now managed to get my hands on that, which is good. There are just a couple of other um, classic colour works, Tartan Played and Thun is it Thundercloud? Thundercloud, which I've struggled to be able to get hold of. Um, so hopefully they'll come back into stock so that I'll then be able to make a start on these as well. I managed to find a um, material and um, so on the background there is like a, a, a dark blue with snowflakes on the background there um, so I managed to find my own equivalent to that so I'm going to cover it in this blue with this silver motif on it so hopefully that will look lovely so another attempt to try to finish something so going to do those on the boards. I've got my um, peacock to have a go at trying to do in a cushion. So I've got lots of FFOing to attempt, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm going to try and do these. So my May, Hello May, that I showed you a minute ago, which I've now, which is here. Sorry, I'm going a little bit behind it. My Hello May, um, the lovely Charlie Feathers. She's been doing... Um, some little smalls of different months of the year as well. And she um, has been doing it where she's been, been finishing them as almost like little magnets. So she's wrapping them around um, board and then putting magnets on the back. And she's spoken me through how she did it. So that's what I'm gonna do with these, I think, is that I'm going to use the, the strategy that she's done for hers. Um, I mean, if you want to have a look at her, she's got some beautiful, beautiful um, pieces on her Instagram. And she's also got a floss tube. Um, she does some beautiful floss drops, of um, each with a different piece of art. And then absolutely gorgeous floss drops. Uh, she sort of does releases periodically. Um, so she puts an announcement up on her Instagram to say when she's going to have a floss drop release. Um, and then you have to be quick to try and get in there because they do sell really quickly. She's also got some beautiful, beautiful pieces of um, cross stitch that she's working on. Um, but these ones just really did catch my eye with the fact that she'd done them as almost like little magnets, which she then stuck to the outside of the tin and then she stores the other ones inside of the tin. So, yeah, really lovely. So I'm going to have a go at that one. But she was lovely enough to explain her method for fully finishing them in that way. So I'm going to give that a go as well. Um, I think that is everything that I wanted to speak to you about today. The time on this video is already racking up, so I don't want to keep you for too much longer. Um, thank you very much for spending um, this almost an hour with me. I really do appreciate anyone checking in. The final thing that I just want to go through is this board here, which you may have noticed in the background, is that I watched Helen at the Diddy Stitcher and she has decided to put all of her whips onto a, a board which she can then see um, and decide which ones she wants to work on. Now, I was finding that I was working on the same ones because I'd almost forgotten which other ones I'd got kitted up ready to go. So I've now written down all of the um, projects that I've got kitted up ready to go that I want to start rather soon. There are a few on here, like my Partridge in a Pear Tree by Nora Corbett, which is kitted up. Um, to be started. I started my Victoria Sponge and then I've got Miss Honeybee that's kitted up ready to go and the Polar Punch collection and I've also got a Harry Potter sampler one that I want to make a start on as well. So I've got them all listed here um, and then I'm going to, I've got um, some little magnets which I've made which have got my rosy cross stitches symbol on the front 
um, and a number. So when I worked on a project, I'm putting the magnet to say that I've worked on it. And then this is the number of days in which I worked on it next to it. So for example, the uniqueness of others, um, I worked on it for seven days this month. Victoria Sponge, I've worked on it for four days this month. Um, Cinderella Lace for three days and so on. And then I can also see which ones that I haven't had a chance to work on this month and decide, almost plan out which ones I would like to work on next month. Um, so what I will do at the end of this, well, tomorrow, I will take a p picture of this on my Instagram and just have an overview as a roundup of what I have done this month. And then I will wipe it all down and start it again for next month and start keeping a track of what I've worked on throughout May. I do think that in May though, I would like to make a start on my partridge in a pear tree. I do need to make a start on those. I've got all 12 of them to, to stitch. And I would also like to do the Nora Corbett's reindeers and sleigh, which I spoke to Zarina about at the retreat again. Um, so I would like to make a start on that collection as well. So I do need to get my, my 12 days of Christmas is stitched so that I can make a start on the reindeers. And I would also like to have, I'd like to get all the ones that I've got on here to be kit, kitted up, started. And then I've got a list of all my whips that I then can just rotate through and work through. The only thing that I haven't got on here is my um, ornaments. So I'm not putting my little mill hills on here at all. They'll just be filler in the ones when I've got a day or so here and there to do. So that is my plans for the next. I don't really have set plans. I just stitch what I want to stitch. I do also want to get my ABC dinosaur finished. So that is going to be a focus, I think, for this um, this next month is my ABC dinosaur. My partridge in the pear tree is going to be started for definite. And I'd like to do some more work on my spring Quaker. So that's a, a bit of an overview, roughly, of which ones I want to focus in on. But it will all depend on how I'm feeling on the day, depending on what I stitch. So again, thank you very much for um, spending some time with me today. If you liked what you see, please give us a thumbs up um, and subscribe so you can keep on track of any other future videos. I'm sorry I haven't been very consistent, but I will try to up my game and pull my finger out a little bit and make sure I do check in more regularly. I am over on Instagram and I am far more active over there. So please go over and check my Instagram page out. Um, as it would be great to hear from you. Any likes, comments, be lovely to read. Thank you very much again and look after yourself. Take care.